Hey there, welcome to the demo scene for the lock picking package that we've created here. Um, this is a pretty big pack. We've got a few things to talk about. One is this keypad here, or lock pad. One is a padlock, and another is a cipher lock, and of course the uh, code that goes behind it in the inspector. So let's just get started right here. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Now in this demo scene, you can see that the lock angle needs to be, uh, well, the, the, the exact opening angle is 70, negative 70 degrees. So if I just press left and right, you can see the lock pick angle change. And then the range at which it will actually open is between 97 and negative 44. These are all stuff you can could control. You can do it randomly or you can code for those as well. And you can change, you know, this needs to be within 22 degrees of the correct uh, set. And if I reset the lock, you can see that change. So that's something that you can easily change. What happens when you get close? Well, let's say I'm, I need to go between negative 90 and negative 50, and I'm not quite there. So you can see that it tries to open and goes back, and then the lockpick will break off, just like in popular games like Skyrim. There you go. Um, so again, I'm going to go closer, and this time, oh. oops, the wrong position. So there's a lot more to this, there's just, uh, you know, that's the functionality of this, but we also have a whole lot of textures. You notice there's a mission that's going on. We also have coding for emissive uh, towards the breakpoint, um, emissive auth, and emissive success. So in this case, uh, as we get close to unlocking it, let's see, let's just make it negative 48 and beyond, the emission will get higher, so you can code for that as well, that's really cool. Um, for the breakpoint, let's see. Get out of the zone. There we go. So it goes up the closer you get to the breakpoint. So it's sort of a warning light, and then just the pulse that can go as well. Right there, just a missive pulse where it's just constantly pulsing. Uh, we also have different face face plates. We have this one as well. Uh, again, they all have sides, so you can kind of see them, or you can actually put them on a wall in a, in a physical game or a VR game. These are all uh, these textures are all something you can edit in Substance Painter as well, so you can create your own textures. You can also easily create your own emission masks. These are just here for uh, as examples. You can also turn off the base plates; just have the keyholes themselves. We have three different keyholes. This is keyhole number two, and. They work with the base plates. Both base plates do work together if you'd like as well. You can do them separately or together. And then we have lock three, which is more ornate. You can see how it kind of works with those as well. Uh, and again, it works as by itself or just stuck against the wall. Uh, we also have a padlock. It works very similarly uh, to the keyhole. The only difference here is that it has a different opening, so let's check that out. Just gonna show that again from a different angle. There we go. Notice the runes here have some emission on the sides there too. Alright, and we also have a button, pretty simple button. I'm gonna just press P here to open and close it. So that could be put on all sorts of places. And again, the button also works with base plates and base plates as well. You also have a whole lot of textures. These textures come with the package. Uh, we've got seven different textures to, to play with. So I'm just gonna kind of show them all for you. Of course, even though these are separate objects, the textures all work uh, in the same way where they all have matching uh, treatment. And like in this case, uh, or in this case rather, some have additional ornamentation that was added in Substance Painter, something that you can easily Modify in Painter if you so choose, or add to it. You can add, you know, hints or something like that if you'd like. So let's show 
put both of these base plates together. Alright, here's the cipher lock. Uh, there's a whole lot of options here as well as the key, the keyhole itself. So I'm going to kind of show uh, some of the different things. First, let's just look at the textures. Uh, we again have uh, we have the emissive and no emissive. If you don't have emissive on these, it's a little hard to see the bumps, but of course, um, you can see them depending on how you texture you use. I do suggest using the emissive though to some degree. Uh, uh, yeah, emissive emissive. We also have an option, this is something you can turn off, this selected wheel emissive where it changes the emission color with the selected wheel. You can turn that off inside the uh, uh, inspector and I will show those details in just a second. But for this lock uh, you have to line up these symbols correctly and when you reset the lock right now I have it set to randomize and also uh, set these to a, or show the animation where it's random. And we're going to check out in a second all the different options in the inspector, but let me show you how this one works. Up here, my little cheat sheet, I can see wheel one is already in the correct spot, so I'm going to just mouse over and do wheel two, move that to the correct spot. Since it is randomized, I don't actually know what the correct code would be, but I know that this needs to be at zero. Uh, or within right now, I think it's set to four degrees of zero, uh, which is close enough. And there's actually a variable called the close enough range or close enough distance. And once they're all pink, or actually before that, let me show you what happens when we try to open it. It doesn't break, but it does have the same little jiggle sound. And when we get to all of them, in the pink zone. Now I'm going to open it. There you go. And now the lock is open. You can go on with your game from there. Alright, this is the keyhole demo scene. And I'm going to check out the inspector. So I'm just going to open up lock objects. Click on lock set. This is the prefab. It's got everything here. Just turn off the on and off the different things that you want to include. Um, I'm going to check out the base. Actually, just the lock set rather. Uh, and this is our inspector now, is a custom inspector with some uh, help boxes to help you out and understand what to do here. You can turn that off if you want, and you can also just see the full inspector if you'd like. Uh, I do suggest, as the warning says, that you do not use the full inspector unless you know what you're doing, as you could uh, mess things up a little bit um, if you touch the wrong thing. So, uh, what you can adjust here is the general speed, the maximum speed for the different lock pick, the keyhole, and the return when it returns. Well, you just use those sliders to make them faster or slower. Um, then the give distance and close distance here it, it, and also the break time is in regards to uh, the actual open position. The uh, close distance is uh, actually the give distance is the actual range at which the lock pick needs to be. So if you have the lock pick at say uh, 80 degrees will be the uh, solve position, 
it's very difficult for a player to get exactly to 80 degrees, so you might give them a give of about 5 degrees, or maybe on easier locks to pick, you might give them a give of 20 or 30 degrees, so there's a much wider area at which they could uh, successfully open the lock. The close distance is kind of a hint. Uh, if they're within this of one of the two give sides, whether it's too high or too low, it will the lock will turn a little bit and then start shaking. So the closer you get to it, the more you can turn it before the lock starts shaking. And finally, the break time is when how long you can shake before it breaks. Um, finally the last part is all these audio objects uh, and audio dealing with the audio. Um, in the pack we have all these different audio objects here and they're just pretty simple locks at audio script. There's nothing fancy about these. They all do go into an audio mixer um, right here and so you can kind of adjust the volume or the different um, uh, effects on each of these. For instance the click actually has this pitch raised to 500% from the uh, uh, audio, from the click audio uh, source file itself. All right, here's the cipher demo scene. Now, if you notice, we actually have three different demo scenes because you can change the number of symbols on each wheel. For the demo scene I showed you, there's 18 symbols, but I've got two demos here, one with nine and one with 12 symbols. And we have a similar script again. You can turn off the, the help boxes. You can show the full expector, but if you do, um, show the full inspector then I suggest uh, you know what you're doing. Um, so with the cipher you know there's a good chance you're going to want to set the actual combination uh, so you know what uh, the combination is and maybe you drop hints throughout a level or something and so if that's the case you're gonna click the set solution button and then you can simply turn these to where you want the solution to be so if we turn these to double X this double X and we'll just do that for all of these. If you notice it's actually uh, snapping to the position as well which is great to help you get the exact position. So we're just going to make that across the board that double X symbol and then click the green button to save the solution. So that's the solution. Now I can also start the start race rotation so if I didn't want it to be completely uh, random and I wanted to say something very specific at the start you can set that here too. Um, and you notice this does not lock because Potentially, you could have it set partway through. If this were a physical lock, maybe it wouldn't snap to the solution. So let's start this with uh, um, with all the uh, lightning bolt symbols right there. Uh, you notice it didn't actually. You don't see that, but when we press play here, it's going to rotate to those uh, symbols right there. Now. Right now it's rotating to those symbols. We have some options in here to keep it from doing that. So the quick reset, when this is uh, done and we press play, it's gonna snap to the correct spot. So there you go. So now the player, when you load it up, won't see that rotation. That's really just a, a call on you whether you want the player to see the rotation or not. Um, whether we highlight the active wheel without that selected, then you'll see that the wheel, the active wheel is not high, uh, highlighted, so you don't see the yellow. Um, it's a lot easier to know what wheel you're on to, you know, but if you're doing a VR game or something with a mouse, perhaps, you know, and your mouse is, oops, and your mouse is dragging these, then perhaps uh, you don't need to highlight the wheel. So that's another call that you can make for yourself. And then uh, the move to close enough spot happens when, um, when, or move to closest spot, not close enough spot, happens when you get close to a uh, uh, one of the official spots, but you're not quite there. It's kind of a little tip to, to help players out. So if they're, you know, uh, whoops, wrong view. So if they're moving up, the the wheel will just turn or turn to this closest spot. So it'll just kind of uh, fix itself there. And so that um, that can be seen as well when you when you start it up. If you have both uh, quick reset off and move to close the spot on, and let's just change the start rotation to be just kind of random. Um, there we go. And then when, when we press play, you'll see the wheels move, and then at the end they will all snap to the right location. There you go. So you see that there. Um, the close enough spot again. It's 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 very difficult for a player, especially without the snap, to get to the exact spot. And so, if you have a, the close enough, this will allow a four degree plus or minus uh, a wiggle room for the player to successfully unlock. And again, down here is the audio options. The this last part right here, you gotta be careful with um, two things. Worse, first is the symbol count. Right now, it's there's 18 symbols on this. And that's uh, you know important because which where the the wheel turns is going to be based on those symbols, and um, 
So if you're gonna have a, let's load up the nine symbol. Uh, so now this one has nine symbols, and so when I move up and down, it's gonna go to those symbols rather than going to the area between. And so that's basically what controls the math about what is the correct spots to keep the wheel going to. So it's very important to not change uh, this value unless you are also changing the uh, uh, actual wheels themselves. And the reset on awake will, uh, if you have that, then it will um, uh, randomize the values on awake. So that will override all your solution and all your start rotations that you set here. So you don't want to select that unless you absolutely want the solution to be random. Uh, that could work for your game, but I'm guessing for many uses, that's not going to be the selection you want to go with. So there you go. I'm going to show the uh, uh, 12 symbol as well. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, the lock picket set's pretty cool. It comes with all these textures, all these audio files as well. Everything you need to just drop this into your project and, and get going with it. Um, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Have a great day.